Major support for these broadcasts is provided by New York Community Bank, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chelsea Lighting, Capital One Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Genova Burns, Gian Tomasi and Webster, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, The Wickhoff Group, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, MNT Bank. Additional support is provided by Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Briarwood Organization, Bruce Mosler, C.B. Richard Ellis, Colliers International, New York, LLC, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, DDG Partners, Friedman LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Flushing Bank, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Centurion Holdings, John Katsimatidis, Red Apple Group, Madison Realty Capital, Margolin Weiner and Evans, LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Massey Knackle Realty Services, New Banks, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Sterling and Sterling, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, and These Friends. So here we are in the fall of 2012, the 12th year, the 12th season of the Stoller Report. And I don't know, but you know, I'm sitting here with these wonderful guys in the real estate business who all seem to be so positive and look how great the world is going to be in 2000, at the end of the year in 2013. So I want their opinions to provide me as opposed to my non-crystal apple today. My guests, they include Ofer Yardeni, who is the uh, managing member and co-founder of Stonehenge Properties. Jim Carpenter, who is the senior executive vice president and chief lending officer at New York Community Bank. Robert Knackle, who's the chairman of Massey Knackle Realty Services. And Steve Whitkoff, who's the chairman and CEO of the Whitkoff Group. So, you know, I got owners, developers, brokers, and a banker. Let's go from the banker point of view. You know, it's been a good year for a lot of businesses. Ofa has been buying buildings. You've been financing them. Steve's been buying and selling. And Bobby has been selling everything. You know, he's, you know, he sent out a letter saying that he hasn't seen numbers like this in his career, in his career, you know, when he was in diapers, you know, in New Jersey. So how do you look at the... Well, I've always told Bob, but I, uh, every time I see one of his deals, I can't finance the uh, acquisition cost because he seems to get the highest prices in the market, so... Uh, how, how do but we, that's how a do great we, comment. How do you see, you know, especially with these high you know, prices? We, we, we see sales activity picking up. Uh, I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're very favorable as we, we look into the future. Um, I think a lot is riding on, uh, on what's ahead of us this, this November. Um, you know, uh, jobs are, are, are really going to be what, what, what comes down to as far as, uh, you know, where this market is heading. Uh, and, and I think that if we had this show in December, we'd probably have a lot better better sense on uh, uh, directionally. There's no problem. You'll be back in January. I'm sure we will. But I mean, directionally, uh, you know, last year there was so much pent up, uh, uh, you know, uh, activity. Last year we did about $8 billion worth of commercial real estate finance. Uh, through the first two quarters of this year, we did about uh, $4 billion, and we're still riding very strong. Uh, three quarters of its multifamily and a good mix of its is, is sales activity. And what are the and how much different? Because I know when I had my dear friend Mr. Yardeni on the show about a year ago or two years ago, I said to him, "Why don't you refinance?" He said, "I did, but then the rates has went down." How much have the rates changed in the last year? Oh, it's it's. I mean, you you see, it's it's absolutely uh, ridiculous. And 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 
I think one of the um, toughest challenges we have on the refinance side, we see so much capital being, uh, uh, or deals being recapped going longer term. I think there's, uh, you know, uh, owners are taking advantage of the lower rate environment going longer uh, term in the financing. Um, and that's been a challenge for us because for the same reasons an owner is looking for uh, that, that fixed rate, that fixed debt service obligation, you know, you know, those rates are not as compelling to us to go long term. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's gone down to a couple hundred basis points. Over so, the course he, of last year. so let's talk to an owner. You have been very active in 2012. You yeah. bought a couple of properties, you know, the Frankel portfolio, congratulations on your West Side property. You have another couple of deals that the press let them take it. I, I like to keep on, on a lower keel. You know, so things are good. How do you see 2012? Uh, I guess, you know, he's the ultimate optimist. I mean, and him, you know, the statistician is overjoyed. How do you see the year? I think for us at Stonehenge, uh, 2012 was uh, uh, truly the best year in uh, the firm uh, history. Uh, not only we purchased until now, uh, six, uh, close to $600 million of properties here in the city. But I think in terms of stability in our portfolio, we have been seeing uh, rents uh, increasing uh, around 8 9% overall of our portfolio. Uh, our vacancy percent is negligent. It's not even half a point. Uh, concessions we are not giving anymore on any one of our units. Uh, our vacancy in the retail is not existing. So on a full occupancy, with rents increasing, with huge de uh, continuing demand for our multifamily, we are very satisfied and uh, uh, quite confident feeling that the market is going to be strong and continue to be strong. Now, if you look at our portfolio, We've, when you see that 45% or 47% of our tenants are coming from outside of New York City and without new construction here for rental apartment, uh, one thing only can happen to rents in New York, will continue to increase. Now it's true that after uh, Lehman collapse, we had uh, so a, a larger vacancy, but those tenants that lost their job did not go home and live with their parents. They double and triple in the apartments here in New York. So those tenants today are finding jobs or they are reinventing themselves today as everybody is almost an uh, independent worker. Those tenants today are moving and they are finding their own unit. So we 47% of the tenants that are coming from outside of New York and growth in New York City and no new construction uh, I, I think that it's uh, a golden period for owners uh, in terms of uh, uh, rents in the real estate. Mr. Whitcock, this golden period for owners, how high can rents go and how much can people afford? I mean, prior to the show, you said that you may be looking at a site and you might plan a residential rental building. How high, I mean, you have some, you have a great, development on Charles Street, you have the other one on Broadway. I mean, you know, these are great condo developments, but how high <coughs> can people pay in rent? I mean, it, isn't there a point that, mm, catch me? I mean, where do you see it? Of course, yeah, there is. Now, we, we bought a rental site, Mike, but we bought it at a price per square foot that we can make it a rental site. So we bought a very unique deal that we, we haven't seen something like that in so you bought six a or site. seven years. So, so what do you think that the rents are going to be on this type of deal because I'm going to tell you a very interesting story after you answer the question. I think the rents are going to begin with a 70. Now he, here's an interesting thing. Uh, Ofer knows my colleagues uh, at Madison and they bought a site about a year ago, maybe a little while longer in Williamsburg. And I helped them with the financing and I think we pro formed maybe 38 to 42 dollars a square foot for Williamsburg, North 6th Street, mm -hmm. not too far from the train, good location, six-story, seven-story building, you know, plank type of construction, nothing great, pretty nice. At least over. 50 now. Yeah, they, they opened up the rental office two weeks ago, and they started at uh, $63 a square foot, and they're 70% rented. Are they giving concession? No, this no is concession at all. 
Wow. So, but Williamsburg well, what, what, is hot now. Yes, it is. But it's, what I what, what I'm it. saying to you is, from a forty dollar number to a sixty five dollar number, for somebody to be renting a one bedroom apartment in Williamsburg, a young person for forty one hundred dollars, that's a lot of money to me. Well, it is. By the way, <laughs> rents are going to attract jobs. We were talking about it before. If there are a lot of jobs in this town, then you'll see people pay a lot of rent. And if there are not a lot of jobs, you'll see people move out, and it will happen. One of one of the indivi one individual who's in your business who was on a show about four weeks ago was Zio Feldman, who's doing a number of condos. And when I spoke to Zio and I said, "Are you going to? How do you like the rental market?" His comment was he wants to do condos at a certain level because if people are paying these high rents, these people will go out and then maybe buy an apartment on the Upper East Side where they can pay $1,200 a well, square Well, I think that's uh, going to uh, be, the, nat that's gonna be the, uh, the, the, the transition over time, you know, as, as jobs are created, uh, you know, the, the people, will, you know, young, young college grads will move out of the house, refill the, uh, <clears throat> the apartments that are vacated by people that have opportunities for better jobs and opportunities to purchase uh, uh, the condo units. But there's definitely going to be, and I don't know what, what level that is, uh, there's going to be a, a, a threshold, a, a point of equilibrium where people are going to do the math and uh, begin to buy more uh, 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 and move back into, uh, in, in, into the condo market. I mean, we, we, I, I certainly think that, you know, that this has been a great opportunity to buy a piece of land that, that could, you could justify uh, on a rental basis, I mean, prices soared. Before I offer, uh, to yes. we bought in this deal, Jim. We paid just under two hundred dollars a square foot. I mean, that's so you can't find that, and it's a unique opportunity. I like Zeal a lot, by the way, but just, and I, I want to say I was on that show that w that you referred <coughs> to. But I would tell you this, and he's a smart guy, and he knows what he's doing. But the fact of the matter is, he bought sites that he can't underwrite for rental anyway. So. It, it, it's natural that he's going to talk about condo because he can't underwrite it for rental. And I understand, and everybody in the business understands the um, equation of what's the after tax, and uh, uh, on an after tax basis, what is the cost of ownership against the cost of renting. renting. Yeah. But it's an illusory analysis as rents get this high. So the question is are the economics in New York City going to be there? Are the economics in New York State going to be there? Will there be jobs? Can people earn a living? If they can, then they're going to be here. The tourism is certainly here. I mean, you look around you, it's just nothing short of incredible. Times Square is off the charts. Shopping at, uh, from a retail standpoint is off the charts. And the foreigners want to buy here. So I think there are some good, there's some good traction points, mm -hmm. Jim. But and I think and with interest rates as low as they are, you know, there's, there's an opportunity to purchase and leverage um, with the residential uh, Mortgage market is still very, very tight. Uh, That's the point. And, and yes, to but get the it, end it, loans are very hard. Even, but I always said that the national sport in New York is not the Yankees or the Mets or the Giants. And I took it from you. I, I like always it. said that the sport in, here in New York is buying real estate. Everybody wants to be to buy real estate. That's why but, they go to the source. But today things change, and we have we did a condo on 82nd Street that thank God was successful. But when we examined the market, and first we saw that in order to get financing today for a buyer, <coughs> they need to put too much equity. They need still to put between 30 to 40% equity in buying a deal. Second, the philosophy, and especially after the collapse of Lehman, people are living in an uncertain world. They see right now the new elections that we have in Washington. They see the election that we have next year. And you're talking about a new generation of kids that are living. These are young generation that they have uh, cell phones, they have uh, uh, iPad, iPhones. You go to an apartment today to see how they live, nothing is on the wall and, no, and no phones. They have a, a, a bed that in one day they can move. These tenants today want to explore many neighborhoods. They don't want necessarily to go to buy an apartment until they get married or have a kid. So I don't necessarily see the buying trend of buying a one-bedroom apartment here. I more see if you want the luxury apartments or for family to stay for stability. But for the young generation that to buy one bedroom the way it was, that somebody convert 300 units as a one bedroom, I don't see the market going in this direction. Not uh, now. Bobby, as you, you've been writing and you've been so proficient, you say this is the best year that you've seen. I heard him 
What do you see? How do you see this year, and how do you see 2013? Well, Michael, first, congratulations <coughs> on the 12th season of the show. Thanks for having all of you been my friends, supporters, and been with me over the 12th season. Absolutely. The, uh, Including live from Charlotte's <laughs> Kosher Restaurant. The, uh, the sales market in New York City is on fire. Uh, we're on pace for about 30 to 32 billion of sales volume this year. There'll be over 3,000 properties sold in the city. Uh, and while these numbers are only about half of what they were in the peak of the market in 07, those numbers are five times what they were in 2009. So all the brokers in the, in the business are feeling like things are, are terrific, certainly on a relative basis. And I think talking to the top agents at Massey Knackle and talking to the top brokers around the city, many of whom are, are my good friends, I think many of us will have the best year that we've had yet in 2012, mainly because of the, the fact that the downturn in the market weeded out a lot of people from the business, uh, and volume has come back the way it has, and market share for everybody that has remained active is staying very good. And to Jim's point, the low interest rates that we've seen in the marketplace, coupled with the excessive demand that exists in the marketplace today, are are really exerting upward I mean, pressure you, on you values. I mean, in that article, which I've quoted you, that there are bidding wars again. I mean, we're at times that people are bidding wars. You know, I, I know that Jim, you know, Ofer is a great client, and Jim is one of the best bankers for he takes care of his customers. I mean, when he's looking at something, I mean, it, it's constant bidding. It's yeah, well, I think you look at, at many of the banks that, uh, you know, Jim, you guys quote a certain loan to value as what your standard product is. Uh, I don't recall a transaction in the last two years that we've done where the buyer has gotten the uh, projected loan to value. Most of the buyers are putting 40 or 50 percent equity because of debt service coverage requirements. And in terms of the bidding wars, the activity on sales, especially if you have a good piece of product, is so intense that, um, you know, for instance, we use the, the Century portfolio that we're marketing now, 29 assets. Uh, for a family that's a long-term owner of these assets. Uh, most of them are in Manhattan. Uh, we have about it has half to of those. Be Manhattan. Ofa doesn't. He, no, we, he can't go to Brooklyn. He looked. Some are in Brooklyn, and the activity in Brooklyn's great. But uh, we have about half of those assets under contract now. About 120 million dollars of that asset of that portfolio is under contract. Every contract that was signed was at or above the asking prices, which we thought were very aggressive. And it's just a simply a nature of a, a supply-constrained environment, excessive <coughs> demand, low interest rates, and a lot of buyers are basing what they're paying for properties today on what the cost of borrowing is, which really is not a very healthy thing. Um, and uh, But that is really what's driving the market. What happens, it, you know, great things today... What happens if refinance? I mean, interest rates have to go up. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to be a broken record, but eventually they have to go up. We don't remember this. I, I mean, since I'm older than all of you, I do remember when interest rates were 18 percent. When but on, with all the respect, for the last 15, 16 years, interest rates have been going uh, on the on the different direction. So I've been always hearing that interest rates were going up. And interest rates is going. Can I up. check with the banker? And, no, and they, yeah, they, yeah, they, they have the to. Last they have to. Yes, I they will have to go. But for at least the last 15, 16 years, they have not been going this direction. Whitcoff yeah. is pretty close in age. And you've seen them go up. I, I, listen, I, <laughs> I was with yesterday uh, someone who I I don't want to mention his name, but I would tell you if I mentioned his name, you would tell me he's at least one of the three smartest real estate people you know. He said the greatest instrument you can own today on your property. Obviously, it's not forecasting an uptick in interest rates in the next 12 months. Is a 10-year mortgage, fixed-rate right. mortgage on your property. It has to happen. And this mm -hmm. is a very, very sharp, incisive thinker. And he's right. But is it happening in 18 or 24 months? Probably not. I, th I think Bob touched on a very important part, at least from my perspective as a lender, and that is that uh, you said that a lot of the deals that you're seeing get done are not getting done at full dollars, at least against the valuation and that's because you know good multifamily product is uh, is trading at the uh, low four caps right uh, and and I think that uh, an owner has to somehow be factoring in uh, growth in in the rental income to to to, to support his his underwriting of, of, of the acquisition price there from the lender side it's difficult for us to as particularly you know memories are, are not short at least from the bankers uh, 
vantage point. And, uh, you know, we just came out of this last cycle, and regulators still look uh, somewhat with a jaundiced view. Uh, in a low-rate environment, you know, we need to sensitize the numbers, whether you use a, uh, uh, you know, higher debt service coverage ratio or you, you underwrite at a higher rate or, uh, you know, wh whatever factors you use, sizing up proceeds at a coupon rate of interest, uh, I think, is somewhat uh, ir irresponsible from a lender's perspective. But I do think that um, owners that are buying, factoring in some of that upside in their, in their thinking, are not doing that uh, w uh, uh, without some support in the marketplace. I think there's still uh, a lot of argument to be to be made for at least over the near term. Still, this escalation in, in rents, the supply is still is still limited. Uh, there's been very that, little development. Okay, that's specifically if we have to say that's on the residential rental. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve brought up retail. You also brought up retail. That retail is doing well. I'd say not all over the city, but in many parts of the city. Um, but what about the office market? I mean, you have some office building financing. I mean, the office market, and you've owned some buildings. You've up and down on the office. Market. I think it's soft. I really do, and that's and that's a bellwether. But I, I mean, think it's a different dynamic, though. I think you look at the residential market. That's no, but I but, upon I'm, but I but I put the have to yeah, but I put somewhere. the four of you here really to talk about your your outlook, and I, that's why I'm really interested in Steve's observation on the office market. I think because I believe the office market is soft, and I believe that a lot of the deals that have been done this year have been renewals. Yeah, I I, I would tell you that <clears throat> if you were looking for for concern in this market, look, New York, York City is better than anything in the country right now. So we're all lucky in, in, in that sense. But, but the fact is, office leasing is soft today. And it's very soft today. And there's, you know, I, I hear, listen to all the private equity guys tell me that uh, they're out there looking for office space. But the fact of the matter is, if you're buying, if you're buying spec office buildings today and trying to lease them, it's not such an easy trick. It's really not. It used to be, I can remember, Mike, when we had a very large office portfolio in New York, and then we own three million square feet in Chicago. And every four months or so, you'd see a 100,000 square foot deal in Chicago. And every week, you'd see a half a million square foot deal in New York. Then you'd wake up and you get a two million square foot deal. And that doesn't exist anymore. And that goes exactly to what we were talking about earlier. Goldman's not taking space anymore. Deutsche Bank's not taking space anymore. Citibank, if they take space- They're giving you more subleases. Citibank gonna, is giving back is more- gonna, Is gonna regurgitate space and then go somewhere else. So, But isn't it a combination of two things, really? It's a fact that space users are using space a little differently today, coupled with the uncertainty that exists. And now, Jim, you I brought up before the, the election, and we have two big elections that are going to impact the fundamentals of New York. I, I really think it's not the way they use space. I think it's the uncertainty. I think people want to see. People don't want to make big decisions. We have a major election uh, coming. And next year we have an election here in New York City. So those two elections are very, very important yeah, okay, guys, for the health. When, when it used to be when this is pre-Dodd-Frank that taking space, taking two million square feet of space for Goldman Sachs was a rounding error on their ba balance sheet. It didn't even mean anything. Mm -hmm. and they, those, they got calls from their, from, their, from their trading desk we need more people here. Bang. They'd be in the market for another half a million square feet. I mean, they do it almost instantaneously. That, that, that's, not, that's not happening anymore. And the proof's in the pudding. It's a tri trickle-down effect. You run out But on the other hand, Steve, yes, Goldman is maybe shrinking because their business is changing. But on the other hand, you have technologies companies that are coming to New York City. And if you'll see the statistic, you'll see that these technology companies that used to be in California now are uh, coming here to New York. But they don't take almost. They don't, they they don't they are, they're taking space. Space. Facebook, taking. Facebook was in the market. They came to my office. They were in the market for 150,000 feet. Yes. I mean, that's, that's, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, that's a, that's a Chicago level deal. Mm -hmm. it, for New York to really thrive, you've got huge um, projects going up on the west side. You've got the, the Larry Silverstein stuff downtown. Office is soft today. No, it, it there's is. no doubt about it that office is not. And I think, I think that's a little spooky. Of the year. And we in the residential, we need jobs at a certain point. In order to rents to continue to increase, you need jobs. You need more people are coming. By the way, and, and, if, you, and if I could just say this, but for Bloomberg, it would be a lot softer. 
I, I agree with you. I mean, I think what he did with technology and that campus is nothing short of incredible, but I think it's difficult out there office-wise. And what about, you know, Steve spoke recently about land prices. That he, I mean, to pick something up on a prime location at two hundred dollars a, a an FAR. Is Even if it's not in a prime location, to pick up two hundred dollars a square right. foot, I agree. it's a gift. You don't see these kinds Where, of things in prices. How high? How high are land prices being sold for? Well, Michael, land prices in the city have exceeded where they were at the peak of the market in 07. No doubt about it. Everything has we, exceeded. We, we sold a site downtown in Tribeca for over $700 a buildable foot recently. Um, I, Steve, I commend you on finding a deal uh, in Manhattan at, at under 200 a buildable. I haven't seen those. 2007, we used to get rent in Chelsea around $55 a square foot. Today, we are getting somewhere between $85 to $90 a square foot. But at those land prices, you're still not going to justify residential yeah. development. I think that at $90, uh, rental $85 a square foot, you can justify no, you residential. You, you can, couldn't build it rental. Yeah, yeah, but, there's also, no, there's no tax yeah but also in 2007, real estate taxes on that $55 rent were maybe 20% of the revenue. Today, the city's targeting 30% right. of the revenue. Not so much. Not so much. But the, definitely the real estate taxes increase. Uh, and in the residential, the landlord has to absorb it. But uh, uh, overall, uh, I think the trends increased more than the real estate taxes in certain areas in the city. What, what, so, you know, you gotta, if you have a pool of money, uh, and this is a question to the owners mm -hmm. and also to the person who's selling the properties and to the banker, what, everybody I hear, multifamily, multifamily, what would be your second asset class that you would like to there, own? There's no doubt in my mind. More multifamily. More multifamily. <laughs> uh, you, you have, you know, no, give me multifamily, give me Manhattan, very, and that's it. No, it's very, it's very rather simple, simple. Because the way the growth of rents are here in Manhattan, the way that with the regulation of rent stabilize and rent control here are in the city. So the, I, 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 even if, Rents do not continue to increase. You still have three, four, five percent growth every year. So buying multifamily, especially if you can buy in Chelsea, Greenwich Village, in these areas, and create retail. Every multifamily that you buy, you have to create. You, ju you just. You know. Well, so well, so well, I feel well, very well, comfortable. Wittkoff was young, and he's starting out. He he bought Upper Manhattan. He went into the Bronx. What, what's your thoughts about? The, the other boroughs, or do you know what they are? Oh, I, I definitely think, <laughs> I, I know the boroughs, I, even, I, I went there. I definitely think <laughs> that Williamsburg is a great market of which I completely missed. Uh, and there are other parts in the city uh, that I think that are a great place for investments. But you need to know those areas, and you, n you only have a certain hours during the day, and you can't be everywhere, so you need to know where can you maximize and, and where you and can and have and the and most profit. And if there's a downturn in jobs, then those are the most exposed, and his portfolio is the least exposed. And that's the facts, because they're the first working class people are going to be the first people to get laid off, and so that's, those areas have the most credit issues up there. And you're beginning to see, Jim, I don't know, you'd, I'm not buying uh, um, in, in the boroughs anymore, but I would imagine you're beginning to see nosebleed type um, prices being paid up in up in these neighborhoods. Well, that's what we were we were and getting at before, you know. And that's, and, and that's really scary. In sizing, I mean, I, th I think, it, you know, from a lender standpoint, we've, we've got to be prudent, you know, low interest rates, low cap rates, uh, uh, sizing deals based on prospective thinking. Is, is, is a recipe, and, and, and we've and got to be careful. But fortunately, I'm seeing a prudence in the market. I, I think yeah. for September, with the election, we have, s have seen a good idea. I will promise to have you back in December or January after the election, seeing what the world is for your outlook at a later date. I'd like to thank Ophir Denny, Jim Carpenter, Bob Knackle, and Steve Whitkoff. See you next week.